Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. Ugh. Love Mondays. What is the day today? Today is Monday the 10th. <sighs> I fucking hate Mondays because I'm so used to sleeping in on the weekends and I gotta get up. But I actually did prepare for it a little bit on Sunday. So it was okay. Uh, the transition out of bed for me is the hardest to make. So anyway... First day on the cut was over. Let's see what the weight is this morning. Two twenty-two point eight. Whoa. Zoom in. I've been seeing that number two twenty-two point eight a lot over the last couple of months, so I just found that interesting. But anyway, we actually gotta go because we got an early morning class today and uh, I have to get something to wake me up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get caffeinated. That's what I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna head to class and I'm gonna come back and check in then. I wanna try to go to the gym relatively earlier than usual today. Usually I come back, I eat something at work, and then I go to the gym. I'm gonna come back, eat something, and then just go straight to the gym because I kind of want to beat that sort of high school, you know, traffic, and the gym is less crowded, and I got a squat today, so I need a rack. Or at least I think I'm squatting today. It is a new block, and this is legitimately the first day in the block. The first day is supposed to be a leg day, not a back day, but it's all good. So anyway, yes, supposed to hit legs today. Um, definitely going to hit legs today. Um, it's just a matter of, do I need a squat? Do I need a squat? I'll check the program before we leave, but I'm going to try to hit it as soon as I get home, after I eat. So I'll see you guys then. What's going on, everybody? So... It is about that time to go to the gym, and I am just reviewing over the program. This is sort of going to be a de facto deload week. Percentages are going to be low. Uh, the volume is already pulled back. I think that does increase in the later half of the week. Um, and judging from what I've looked forward on this program, um, that is a trend that sort of maintains... You know, as the the first half of the week seems to be a much lower volume than the second half, um, I think that does gradually increase over time. We're probably adding a couple sets of certain exercises here or there. Today was supposed to be the first day, uh, and uh, we have deadlifts to start with. You know, I did do a back workout, so that might affect my deadlifts, but we're working with like... 75% for four triples, so I'm sure it won't be that big of a deal. Today's pre-workout is this secret canister, unmarked, black market, under the table, not FDA approved free workout. Oh. Just kidding. It is not any of those things. What it actually is, and I should probably just get rid of this thing, I don't know why I still have it in here, is uh, Beyond Raw Lit Gummy Worm that I accidentally pulled the entire label off of because the label wasn't like properly separated from the cap. So as I was trying to open it, I should have just tried to unscrew the cap first and pulled that off, but I ended up pulling the whole label off. But it works out because I can actually see how much I got in here without having to open the canister not like that's a huge deal honestly but yeah beyond raw lit gummy worm also i forgot to mention yesterday that i did take creatine but i took it post-workout because i actually forgot to take it pre-workout we're not gonna make that mistake again not that it really matters in fact post-workout might technically be better now this gummy worm flavor of Lit, I know that it has, I believe, 3.2 grams of beta, which is fine. It has only 3 grams of L-citrulline, which is a little low. I prefer to see at least 5 grams, and ideally even more than that. Um, I believe it also has around, I want to say 250 milligrams of caffeine. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure how much of that is anhydrous and how much of that is some sort of other caffeine-based stimulant, but 250 milligrams of caffeine. So it definitely does the job. Um, you know, it's nothing like super special, but what I absolutely love about this gummy worm flavor is that it is fucking delicious. Oh my God. Like this tastes straight up like a lime gummy worm or like a lime candy. And I absolutely love it. I might be partial to the gummy worm flavor in general, just because I really, really love gummy worms, especially, and, and I love lime candy. So I could be partial to that flavor. Um, it may not necessarily be the way that they flavor the specific gummy worm, but yeah, this is really good. One of my favorites. It performs just fine. Uh, it's pretty standard for a pre-workout, which means it is slightly underdosed. Um, that is sadly the state of the supplement industry where most, if not all, pre-workouts in terms of dosing for effective performance are slightly, slightly underdosed. Some are way underdosed. And that was one of the big reasons I bought that beta alanine and L-citrulline. They're the two ingredients I care the most about. Um, and I think they're the ones that have the most research showing that at these doses, they are actually effective at doing what they say they're gonna be doing. Having these extras in my back pocket so I can just sort of give it a little here and there to make the pre-workout a bit more effective while still getting that great taste. That's really what it's all about. And honestly, you know, after all this time, I really should just formulate my own, start messing around with different ingredients, you know, different things other than just the bare bones. The problem is, is that there's really not much else to mess with. Like, there's some stimulants that I could try. Like, uh, I know that tyrosine is supposed to pair really well with, I want to say caffeine. It's either caffeine or beta alanine. One of those two pairs really well with tyrosine. Um, alpha GPC, um, that could be effective. Choline bitrotrate, that could also be effective. Uh, those are just stimulants. Also, L-theanine is pretty good to pair with caffeine. It kind of takes the edge off and helps uh, prevent crashes. Um, but I have all these tubs of pre-workouts, so I just got to get through them all. And that's going to last me at least another probably six, seven months. So I'll be good for a while. and I won't have to buy more and I won't have to... Um, worry about getting ingredients to try them out so hopefully one day i'll mess around with some stuff especially as i get into it but right now we're going to be focusing on these gains i mean there's really not much else to say except with the pre-workout i don't really need like extra extra pumps because it's a leg day and leg pumps are extremely uncomfortable for me like and i and i already can see like i'm gonna have to do lunges today and lunges get my legs pumped to the max. And it doesn't matter if I'm doing body weight or weighted, like lunges like just make me like swell in my legs. So that's happening today. So I already know that I'm gonna be in for a pump. And uh, leg pumps are just like, we, upper body pumps are great. Like I, I love upper body pumps, but leg pumps are just, I can hard pass on that. So I just got the extra beta in here, give it a little extra kick, maybe get some skin tingles, hopefully, maybe, probably not. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hit this gym before the traffic gets too bad and the gym gets too crowded. What's going on everybody? Welcome to the commentary part of the video. So as mentioned, deadlifts first and foremost. Um, this is 265 pounds on the bar. I know it doesn't look like it, but I only had one set of 45 bumpers available. Somebody's using the other set, and I had to make do. Jim gets mad at me when I uh, don't use the bumpers. Um, I'm double overhanding all of these, and I, I might have been able to go beltless if I really wanted to, and I, I probably should have, but yeah, the weight's so light that I could double overhand all these triples and uh, with no problem. This is kind of the limit to what I can actually double overhand. Um, anything heavier than this and I actually start to have grip problems. So I'm going to double overhand as much as I can just to train the grip a little bit extra. But, you know, I'm probably going to have to switch after this point. 
And uh, you notice I'm facing away from the mirror at this point, and that's because there are these two chicks in front of me doing lunches. I didn't want to make faces at them. So I decided to go ahead and just stare down that decline hammer strength press while I finished out all my sets. So next up we got pause squats. Oh, no, sorry, tempo squats. I say pause squats. I wish these were pause squats. That's what I was thinking the entire time I was doing these. So these were supposed to be a two-second eccentric um, some of them ended up being longer, some of them ended up being shorter. This is sort of the first time I'm doing eccentric based training and while I think I've got the squats nailed down, there are some other exercises you'll see during this workout that I obviously need more practice with. But yeah, this is stupid light and I might have been able to go beltless like I mentioned again on this one. Um, just because, look at it, it's only 195 pounds, it's two sets of six, and even though the eccentric was the eccentric, it really wasn't that challenging and I'm honestly wondering if this is just for technique purposes or if it is supposed to help with positioning or if there's some sort of extra stimulus I'm getting out of it because honestly I haven't squatted under 200 for work sets in a long time and I just don't know if I'm getting much out of these. Um, I am trying to train eccentric pretty consistently so meaning that i'm trying to make sure that i'm going down and going up at the exact same rate every rep um and again like i mentioned it's really difficult um because i've never done it before and it, it's a bit of a learning curve and uh, one of the things i have been noticing is that my positioning needs a lot of work on the descent i tend to want to uh, go forward and i either need to lower the bar on my back or try to stand more upright. Uh, I gotta figure that out uh, as I lose weight, just to see what agrees with my anthropometry more. But yeah, tempo squats, no big deal. Next we have these hyper extensions. And these hyper extensions are interesting. First of all, I'm supposed to have sort of a rounded thoracic or upper back while I do these. So I tried to figure out how I'm gonna do that and uh, I guess I just decided to hold the dumbbell out in front of me. Um, I was debating on whether that was the case of what I should do or whether or not I should just keep it close. But uh, the second thing is I'm actually treating this exercise a lot more like a glued ham raise. So instead of using my erectors to pull me up, I'm digging my quads and, and pressing them into the pad via my hamstrings and my glutes to try to, you know, simulate that glute ham raise motion of forcing my upper body up. Uh, these are two sets of 20, and they are brutal. 20 rep sets can go to hell, uh, for real. Like, my, my hamstrings and my glutes were on fire. And they did not get helped by this next exercise, which is walking lunges. <laughs> Um, actually, you know, I like walking lunges. I, I, it might seem like I don't, but I actually really, really enjoy walking lunges. They're like one of my favorite leg exercises for just general development, and uh, I always feel them. Uh, so I suppose that that's ha that there's something to that, I guess. But uh, yeah, so actually, what I was supposed to be doing is uh, reverse Smith machine lunges. But uh, the gym does not have a Smith machine, which is really odd because this is such a casual gym. And I'm finding that I really, really wish that it did because, you know, I'll explain a bit later. But yeah, I could do calf raises. There's a lot of Smith machine work on this block, like a lot as in like at least two or three exercises that would have needed the Smith machine, uh, which is really odd. Uh, and I, you know. I don't like to make substitutions like this too often, but moving on to ham curls. Actually, uh, I was supposed to do extensions first, but the extension machine was taken. So I decided to do these lying leg curls. And as you can see, this is another eccentric based exercise. Uh, this is a three second lowering phase. And uh, I actually really, really like these. Unlike the uh, tempo squats, or I'm just, you know, I don't know how much I'm really getting out of that. I definitely feel a difference on these and I really, really enjoy them. They, they almost like help me keep my reps honest um, and just going down low enough. So, you know, I'm not just swinging away. But yeah, I'm actually a fan of these. And another eccentric based exercise is the extensions. Now, I was only using about 110 pounds on both the extensions and the curls, even with the eccentric based stuff. But as you can see with these 
extensions, I'm just like having trouble figuring out like how to lower these properly. Uh, but that'll just take some time as I get more practice with eccentric base training. So yeah, I just need more practice with this kind of stuff. And, and hopefully throughout the rest of the weeks, I'll be able to maximize development. So yeah, we've got uh, abductors here. And this, I, I hate these. I hate these so much. But we do need to work the abduction, unfortunately. And uh, I honestly feel like I lack the hip mobility to do these properly. But... I don't know. Maybe I should watch some more booty girls on Instagram because <laughs> they're always doing these types of exercises. But finishing off with uh, leg press calf raises, like I mentioned, if I had a Smith machine, this would be stupid dope because then I could do these standing, which is what the program actually calls for. But as long as my legs are straight, I'm able to do these properly and get what I'm supposed to get out of them. So this is 507 pounds. I did move up to 527 just because these were really, really easy. And uh, these are also a two second eccentric. So yeah, that's kind of it for the whole video. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. And yeah.